Okay, so if you've bought a Raspberry Pi 5, but uh, you're struggling to find a way of writing an operating system to it, this method will show you how to use an Android phone and it will also work on Chromebooks as well. Now older Android phones had SD card slots in them which actually would make this process a bit easier because you could just pop an SD card in and write to that. But I'm going to concentrate on newer Android phones like this Honor View 20 which just really has a USB-C socket. So SD card size I would say you're probably better off with a 64 gig. Uh, you could get away with a 32 gig, uh, but the good thing about having a 64 gig is that you can write an operating system to it, but you'll also still have enough space on it to be able to download another operating system which you can write to another USB stick or SD card, so you can really play around and experiment with the Pi. Now you can use uh, USB sticks. This particular USB stick has got USB-C on one end and USB-A on the other, so actually would work perfectly well in a Pi 5. We can run the operating system from that, but they are quite slow, so I wouldn't really recommend that. This is a very fast USB-C SSD, it's 512 gig, and also works directly with the phone so I can write the operating system to it. But when I use it on the Pi, I need USB-A, so I can use one of these USB-C to A adapters and use that in the Pi, although these are rather expensive, but lovely and fast. But if you have a simple SD card, probably just get an SD card reader like this. Again, this is USB-A, so we're gonna to need to convert that to USB-C to be able to use it in the device. So pop the SD card in here. I've got this little tiny Kingston one as well. This is USB-A. Again, that would plug into this USB-C adapter and could be usable in here. So that's the medium we're gonna to write to, the SD card. So I have got an older video on Raspi Card Imager, which is this app, which is an excellent app for older Pis. Uh, you can choose the Pi that you've got, Pi 0, Pi 2, Pi 3, Pi 4, uh, and then pick the operating system and it will download it to the SD card. Uh, I did try the custom option, uh, which is if you go back, hit the three dots at the top, uh, you've got custom OS. Uh, I thought if I downloaded Raspberry Pi OS, uh, it would work, but it doesn't work. So I've had to use a different method and it's taken ages to work out how to do this. Uh, and that's partly to do with formatting. So let's plug in this device, uh, which is the SD card reader. So you can see that's all plugged in. You can see it's recognized as well. Uh, I've downloaded two apps for this, USB Tools and File Manager Plus. First one I'm gonna use is USB Tools. You can see detecting USB device and say OK to allow it. And the device is showing in the top here. So we need to pick format USB. We need to pick FAT32 because that's the format that uh, the Raspberry Pi uses. And then hit format. But then what it's going to do is ask us to watch a couple of videos. So let's watch a couple of adverts. Let's exit out of that. And let's try again and hit OK. Watch ad. The second advert is super long. There we go. So now we've got two coins we can format and OK. So that's formatting to FAT32. It's worth mentioning at this point that uh, your Raspberry Pi 5 needs to have the latest bootloader. Now, if you bought it recently, it should have the latest bootloader or at least a recent bootloader. Uh, because that's needed for the next operating system that I'm going to install on it, which is PinOS, which is an excellent operating system on a Pi 5 and allows multi-booting of all sorts of operating systems, all from one SD card. This takes a while. My light is flashing on my SD card reader to show me that it's still working. And this process should be pretty much the same on a Chromebook. You can use Android apps on Chromebooks now. Okay, so that process has finished. So let's hit home and we can go into the web browser and we're looking for my PinOS video, which is this one. I need to visit it in YouTube so that I can download links. And there'll be a link in the description, which is for PinOS beta. So click on that and that will take you to this page and download pinlight.zip and try to download anyway. It basically thinks that it shouldn't be on an Android device. You can see downloading the file comes up. 
and that's downloaded. So now we need to go to the Files app, so File Manager Plus, and I'll put a link in the description to both of these apps if I haven't mentioned it already. So let's click on that, go to the USB storage, hit OK to allow it, and try again. And you can see there's some folders in here. Uh, I'm not worried about those at the moment. What was it, Lost and Android? Let's go to Main Storage and find that download. So this is PIN and click on pin light zip and do archive viewer. You can see all these come up. Press and hold on any of them and then press this one to select all of them. And we're gonna do copy and then we're gonna go back to the home bit, go to USB storage and we're gonna paste them in here. So we're basically putting all those files onto the USB storage in what they call the root. So it's not in any folders and to keep this tidy, let's go with Android and Lost and delete those because they're not needed by the Pi. Now we should be able to eject that and put that in the Pi. So I've got a Pi 5 here. It's got a recent bootloader update on it. And let's switch on and it's starting to boot pin OS. Let's switch into screen capture. So now we have a serious amount of choices. So we've got Android 14, so Raspberry Pi 5, Kali Linux. We've got my version of KDE, so let's click that. We've got MX Linux, Lineage OS, Ubuntu, and all sorts of versions of Raspberry Pi OS. But I'm just gonna go with uh, my version and maybe we'll put Android 14 on there as well just so we're showing we've got two operating systems. And let's hit install and yes. And we'll come back when all that's done. Okay, so that's all done. Let's click okay. Let's click on this one and move it up and then hit boot. And it's booting up as normal. It reboots because it was the first boot. So the username is KDE and the password is KDE. And if you want to know how to update the bootloader, tricky thing is if you've only got an Android device, I don't know if there's a way of doing it with a Raspberry Pi 5. You kind of need to have Raspberry Pi OS on it or use the little recovery SD card, but you can't create a Raspberry Pi 5 recovery card on an Android phone. As far as I know, someone might come up with an option, uh, but basically to show you how to update the bootloader, open a terminal and type sudo raspi-config and then we've got advanced options, bootloader version, and just click on latest, and that will update to the latest version. And if we boot it up without the SD card in it, it will tell us what version we've got. So let's hit finish and reboot. So we can see here that my bootloader is from the 22nd of January, 2024 now. And this is my version of KDE Plasma based on Raspberry Pi OS. And you can see here it comes with Pi apps, uh, which basically allows you to install loads of different games and applications on it. I'll just update it. Uh, it also has an auto updater built in. Uh, it also has the Discover Store. So if you're looking for standard Linux apps, they'll come up in there. Then you can look for games, accessibility, accessories, internet, all sorts of things are in there. It also comes with PyKiss as well, which is another way of installing lots of games and apps and tweaks and things like that. All of these need updating. I must do a newer version of this KDE Plasma. Uh, so basically, if you do download this, just hit this and it will do all the necessary updates that it needs. You can see 398 megabytes. Yeah, I definitely need to do an updated version. I've got a few plans of things I wanted to put in there and tidy up. You have all sorts of useful apps like PySafe, which is a way of making a full backup of an operating system on a Raspberry Pi. We've got KDE Partition Manager, which will allow you to expand the partition, which is useful with various different operating systems on the Pi. And obviously we've got Raspberry Pi Imager, which is a way of writing more operating systems to different devices. And this has a, a Raspberry Pi 5 mode on there. So it'll only show you operating systems for Raspberry Pi 5 and there's all sorts of things on there now. So whether that's Ubuntu, whether that's uh, gaming with Recallbox or Android, 
but it also allows you to erase SD cards and also use custom OSs, which I couldn't get to work on Android. But basically, if you download an operating system which isn't showing in this app, it will allow you to write it to an SD card, an NVMe drive, an SSD drive, a USB stick, and then use it in your Pi 5. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.